downtown Minneapolis in 2021 has more than 53,000 residents who call downtown home, more than 200,000 people who work for downtown companies. And as we move through 2021 and society heals from the global pandemic, millions of people will begin returning to visit the leading downtown of the state of Minnesota. If you are a person who lives, works, or visits downtown, you know there are women and men who wear bright blue, green, and yellow clothing. You might have seen them power washing a sidewalk or helping someone with car trouble. You might have noticed them watering plants or providing someone with directions to a destination. You might have seen them sweeping a sidewalk or emptying trash cans. And you might have seen them investing focused time and attention to people in need of social services. To many, though, these champions of goodness, these angels of hospitality, are a bit of a mystery. I mean, if, if you're like me when I first began living and working in downtown, you might be saying to yourself, who are these passionate souls who care so much about downtown Minneapolis? Who pays their salaries? Who coordinates their efforts? such that downtown Minneapolis can have such a critically important sense of welcome, public safety, and even sidewalk beautification. Working in my role as the Director of Downtown Partnerships for the Minneapolis Downtown Council, I invested the better part of two months near the end of 2020 investigating these questions while filming the Minneapolis Downtown Improvement District ambassadors in the flow of their work as well as a cast of leaders and professionals who care deeply about the vibrancy of a downtown for all. What's like your favorite part of your of your job? Meeting people, talking to people. I, I you know, uh, my wife uh, tells me, you know, she asked me, you, you, you don't meet a stranger, do you? I said, no. So in a store where I'm talking, hey, waving high and high and, you know, everything is, that's what I like doing. You know, I, I just like talking to people. And that, this job is the perfect job for me. And what, what drew you to this job and the, the, the opportunity? There must be something, especially since you've done it 11 years, that you really like. Well, I, it's mainly the employees. They're, they're, they're personal. I feed off of their vibes and try to reflect the same thing back to them, keep everything as positive as possible, and make sure everyone goes out with a smile, comes back with a smile, and goes home with a smile. You are the front line. And that, yeah, absolutely. It's the most unnormal year we're ever going to experience, but you all have lent an air of normalcy uh, during this time. So thank you very much. And I'll look forward to continuing to see you out in Nicollet and throughout downtown. And, and we just appreciate so much what you do every day. It's in people's personalities. Um, most everybody that I have ever interviewed likes to help people. And I think going out there and making a difference, being able to make someone's day is really what we focus on. Ambassadors are often that first and last touch that visitors have. So that's really important for us. And I go back to the original mission of the ambassadors to help keep downtown clean, green, and safe. And those are three key elements of our ability to uh, host visitors and to want to get them to come back. We're making a difference downtown. It, it also, personally, I love it because it's, it's taught me so much about downtown. And the more you know about something, the more you can actually really, really love it and enjoy it. Being a safety, you kind of, kind of sit around and observe too. You kind of look around. The cell phone, people looking at their cell phone and looking around, that's a dead giveaway if they're lost. And you walk up to them and ask them. If you're like, that's all they need. Like, they'll be there. They that's what they're looking for, right? They love people. They love to engage with people. They love providing excellent customer service. That's how they get the job. They're informative. And if you're in the city and you're a visitor of the city or you're coming down for a game or an event, like, they're, they're able to help you with where should I go? So I became an ambassador 
And I really, really enjoyed being out, you know, working with, uh, you know, folks that were out and about, um, just assisting and helping. Um, you got a chance to meet quite a few people from out of town, from everywhere, all over the world. And um, they were really impressed with uh, Minneapolis. I mean, your downtown is your beating heart, right? Of any state, any major metropolitan area. And if that's not working for everyone, then chances are it's not working for anyone. I think everybody needs to feel welcome no matter where they are, whether it's in an office building, the Crystal Court, or out on the city streets. Literally on my way walking on Nicollet Mall today here, saw an ambassador taking someone with a cane who was blind and holding them by the arm and walking them down Nicollet Mall. And that's, that's radical hospitality. That's it's a great team. We work with the city. Uh, we work with those that are unsheltered, those that are, unho uh, that are homeless. Uh, we try to give them support as far as housing, treatment, health care, um, food, clothing. We all work on goals with the team um, as far as giving them uh, goals to go for. Instead of being in a survival mode, we try to give them in a living mode. I have a two year in uh, human services and I'm going for a four year uh, for psychology. So this is perfect. Um, I've been homeless in the past. So I think giving back and giving um, to the same community I was part of uh, eight years ago, I think that's where it's at right now. I think the main value of our ambassador program to, to anyone who is downtown for any reason is that it, it demonstrates a high level of respect for the downtown environment. Minneapolis has a reputation, well-deserved and well-earned as being a clean downtown, and we want to keep it that way. I think you can't ignore that having a hospitality resource like the DID Ambassadors is such a huge asset to any place that is trying to offer a sense of safety to people who spend their time in those places. Probably 50 to 100 calls per day. The bright yellow shirts or the big blue jackets, um, knowing that when you're walking to work or coming from your uh, place of residence that you have somebody that you can rely on. The Minneapolis Downtown Improvement District, otherwise known as the DID, is a commercial property funded nonprofit focused on creating a more vibrant downtown. The DID leads and collaborates on programs that make downtown safer, cleaner, and greener. The DID convenes people across sectors and jurisdictions to work on issues of mutual interest, develop innovative solutions to complex public space challenges and opportunities, including strategic activation, and seek continuous improvement of ongoing programs, including the ambassadors. That is the purpose and mission of the DID. Now I invite you to join me in getting to know a few of the women and men who live that mission out every day of the year with tremendous passion and on behalf of you and your downtown. Are you from Minneapolis originally? No, I'm from the Bronx, New York. Bronx? Yeah. That's kind of a saucy story. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, 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 it's a... Uh... You know, I've been, came in 89, I've been back and forth. So, the Bronx and Minneapolis, that's a yeah. really interesting connection. Big Apple, Minneapolis, right? <laughs> there you go, there you go. I gotta ask you, you're from the Bronx, uh -huh. you're now living in Minnesota, uh -huh. what about baseball? I'm a Yankee fan, come on now. Ah, oh, you're killing me! So I'm gonna follow you for the next hour or so. Uh, okay. Tell me a little bit about what we're gonna do. Okay, we you, do got me, you got me on the board. You see that, you see that board right there? Yeah. That's where... You the, wanna, why don't you come show me? Yes, right here, I'm gonna come right now. This board right here tells the ambassadors, you know, the ambassadors where the zones is at. See, you got me on 9th and 10th. Usually, I'll be on the Blitz, or he will have me either on Marquette or Nicollet. Follow me <laughs> to paradise. <laughs> this
this is temp. What I do is I look at the curb line, see, you know, see if there's some trash I gotta sweep up. You know, that's what I do. So I do that and I keep walking, you know, I'm in my zone. How do you handle the cold? You know, they give us uh, weather breaks, like when it's really cold, they'll give us 20, 10. You know, we out here 20 minutes, going inside for 10 minutes, you know, so we can warm up. You know what I mean, sir? Oh, yeah. uh, 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 so you want to come by? Come on, buddy. Uh, you saw that individual right there. Um, you don't know. I can't assume he has mental health issues. I can't assume what's going on with him. But we have a livability team that will help an individual like that. They have the resources to help him. You know, I'm from New York City. So my city's a dirty city. Minneapolis, for the most part, especially downtown, is a clean city. So, and the, and, and the patrons, Want it, you know, the citizens want it that way, so that's why we're here. Boy, 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 boy. If 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 it's not clean, it's, it's, a, it's a mess. It can be, it has its days. You see that, it has its days. Do you have sort of nicknames for spots like the apocalypse? No, or is that special just for that? I, that, that just came to my head. <laughs> It just came to my head. We can cross now. Let's go. He's doing plants and special projects. You got to talk to me about that. Yeah. Oh, I tell you, I, we can talk about that. Yes. So as you can see, he's um, taking a water hose and he's just, boom, just like that. So that's, that's my man Sherman, Charlie 15, jack of all trades. Watering flowers and doing special projects. Go, go on with your bad self, Sherman. Do your thing. <laughs> yep, and ladies and gentlemen, that's what Charlie 15 do. Here, watch your back. There's glass. And we just got, and this got to get swept up because, like I said, you don't want a mother walking with her child and the child happens to fall and she gets cut, you know? And and not just only a child, you know, people too, you know, adults also, you know, teenagers, everybody, everybody you know? So, so we make sure we get as much as uh, much up as possible. We sweep as much. So I like that music wall over there. Do you are you a music fan of any kind? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I'm from the home of hip hop. Where hip hop started, hip hop culture, the Bronx. You know, I like R&B, I like, you know, whatever's good music. You know, I'm versatile. You know, I used to like that British pop rock in the 80s. And I wasn't in the metal like that. I wasn't in that. You know, Pink Floyd, you know. See, that, that wall right there, Prince took a, a famous photo behind that wall with the um, symbols and the notes. You know, that, I think that wall right there just symbolizes Minneapolis as a musical city. Tell me more. Minneapolis Sound. Enough said, you had Prince, you had The Time, um, Morris Day, Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, Jesse Johnson, Jerome. You had other groups like The Jets, Mint Condition, um, Next. Then you had Bob Dylan. You gotta entertain too. I ain't no entertainer, but I can entertain a little bit. Oh, you got you got a pretty good conversational gift. 
Yes. I'm called, I was called a conversationalist. Whatever that means, I was like, whoa. I think DID block by block was the best thing to happen in the city of Minneapolis because of what we do, you know? If, if, this, if this company, this program will, 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 will get deleted or no more, no more of us, Following Kenny around during the early morning cleaning shift was as informative as it was fun. Yet it had me thinking a great deal about the company that hired and trained and then offered ongoing support to Kenny and the entire team of ambassadors. You're like a leader around here. Yes, I am. Tell me about your role with the DID. Well, uh, I've been around for about eight, nine years now. And um, I started off as a cleaning ambassador. Um, work my way up to uh, supervisor. Uh, one of the, my roles is to help the guys out in the field, get them going, uh, give them their equipment in the morning, get them started, give them their locations and what they need to be doing throughout the day. What would you say makes a good leader? I think one of the things that makes a good leader for me and my experience is lead by example. Uh, in the winter time, like I'm out there shoveling with them. You cannot tell a person if you haven't done anything, if you haven't did it yourself, you know, and that's, you know, and th they appreciate that, you know, me being out in the field and working right alongside them. So that's, that's what I try to do. But what would you say are some of the pieces that you have block by block that stand out for recruiting and retaining and inspiring these ambassadors to be incredible hospitality ambassadors? For us, it starts with our people and our people selection, right? And our recruitment. We don't look that deeply at someone's employment history other than that they have one. Um, we're more concerned with their, their, their personality and how well they engage with us, with other members of our team, uh, and with other people that they see throughout the interview process. We wanna make sure that this person that we're gonna bring into our team is not only a good fit, um, but also is comfortable engaging with everyone that they interact with because that's what they see every day on the street. They'll, they could potentially run into the CEO of Target or U.S. Bank uh, on one block and then the next block they have to engage with someone who's having a mental health issue. And, and that takes someone who's comfortable in their skin and comfortable engaging with everybody that they, that they encounter. Describe the different places in your operations center and what what role they play to set up your ambassadors for success the pieces of our operations center or the areas i guess if you will the break room everybody looks to the break room where you know we're going to interact and we're going to talk to one another and which, which is also our our briefing room where we do the morning and shift briefings for every every brief that the ambassadors are going out. Another piece of that or another part of our operations center is the garage where all of the equipment is held. <laughs> um, so all of their tools that they're going to be taking out on a daily basis. And currently with, the, with COVID, we are holding our briefings out in the garage space. It's a lot more open. I had a chuckle with um, one of the ambassadors. That's Tony. <laughs> and, and I noticed that there, there was a, a mannequin like stuffed up in a way. I'm like, what is that? And, and he told me this story of how apparently it was actually placed somewhere, but then when ambassadors would come in, it would scare them, the wits out of them when they'd come. Like, is there any backstory to the mannequin? So yes, um, I decided a few years back to purchase this mannequin to show how an ambassador should be dressed properly in their uniform to um, have a professional image out there in the district. And um, so we purchased this mannequin and it became a joke when it went missing.
while filming around the office, during briefing sessions, and on the street during shifts, it was refreshing to see a little humor woven into the larger sense of esprit de corps that the block-by-block -block company seeks to create for their work environment. I say this because being an ambassador is demanding work. I mean, sometimes hard and dirty work. And the work needs to be done every day of the year, every season of the year, come rain, shine, heat, or cold. That was part of what I discussed with the 2019 Ambassador of the Year, Glenn Schultz, before following him on his work shift as a cleaning and safety ambassador. I started as a cleaner, but now they got me doing safety and cleaning, so it's a little, little, little more fun doing both. Time goes by a little better. So five years, you started at the early shift. Yep. What was like hard about that early shift other than you had to probably get at 3 a.m.? Yeah, I was getting up at 4.30, biking here in the dark, but um, basically the bars were open, so it was a full, full downtown, so it's a lot of cleaned up broken glass and what we call Victor's vomit. I mean, it's, it is what it is, it's <laughs> dirty work. What do you call that again? What's Victor, that? it's a Victor. Oh. Victor's vomit, uh, we, we got cold work. We kind of used the military, the Bravos, the Delta, but we, Victor's Vomit, uh, Cold Blue is Blood. It's just the stuff we have to clean up in the morning after, you know, Fridays and Saturdays especially, or Saturdays and Sundays especially, after the nightlife down here. A lot of partying and it's heavy work. Marshals, I want to get in there. Mm -hmm. You have to come through right through here. Bravo 15, little quick escort to Marshals. That's right through, also. What's up, man? How you doing? Oh, what's up, Ken? They, they, they open this, this is usually closed. So if you're here, then the escalator on. You guys have a good day. Go! Like, uh, explain all that. Yeah. You, if I find someone that needs my help, I'll ask them where they need to go, and then I call into dispatch, I'd say, escort two, could be the movie theater, could be the, mar like that one's the marshals, then when you get there, you say you're 10-8. I mean, the job's done, you're done with your escort, you're back on duty. Escort? So yeah. it's like a... Uh, That's if you're physically doing it. That, right. it instead of giving directions, yeah. if someone would ask, they, they're not comfortable with just directions, you tell them where to go, yeah. they're not from here, you physically take them there. Oh, that's so helpful. So it's taking the pedometer up. 32,000. Let's see what I'm at right now for yeah. the day. And you're at the front of the ship, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm the second. I'm 9 to 530. There's, there's one 6 to 230. That's okay. the first. I'm at 4,400 right now. Let me see that. Show it to the 48, camera. 4840. Uh, there's the... Public safety is on the mind of many across the city of Minneapolis. 
and downtown is no different. Tremendous resources are invested in public safety through the DID. I spent time with John Bunch, a seasoned safety ambassador, for a mid-morning shift. Um, right up here on the street? Yeah, you should be able to park. Just look at the top white strip and it'll tell you what time you can park. Okay, awesome. Sure, sure. As a safety ambassador, I'm always looking around for stuff. And so, I was in a park recently, and there was a young kid that was, he was overdosing. And he staggered right in front of me and walked over to this, this enclosed area and, and lie down. And he, and he was really in trouble. But it, I spotted it right away because that's what we do. It's all we do is we're constantly looking around for what's, what's, what's not right here. In an emergency like that, call 911 right away and then stay there so that they can find us. We have a lot of tools that we use, a lot of platforms to communicate, and um, our focus is on public safety. So I ensure that all of our platforms are working appropriately, that our dispatchers have everything that they need to be successful at what they do. One of our primary roles is to assist the public through our ambassadors. So there might be questions from the public, like Metro Transit bus routes and directions. They might have an address to where they need to go to, but they're not sure how to get there. Um, they might have misplaced their vehicles, so we will help them search for that, safety escorts. And then there are other things as well that are a little bit more serious, like medical emergencies or things that would require us to call 911 or make a 311, which is a city of Minneapolis report. So we have a radio link program that connects to over 60 buildings security in downtown. Um, we do three roll calls a day to ensure that their radios are working properly. Being visible in this uniform that's very, that's very uh, bright is a big part of that. Just having somebody, um, if you look down a street and you see somebody in uniform with a radio on, people are less likely to commit crime. There's always something to do as an ambassador and you can always find something to clean up or somebody to talk to, somebody to help, somebody that needs directions, or just say hi to somebody. That's important too in these days when things are difficult and everybody is, things are kind of depressing a little bit and it's, it's, it's important to just smile, be able to smile and say, hey, how are you doing? How's your day going? That's an important part too of the job. Somewhere in the middle of the filming and interview process, I began to be overwhelmed by the intricacies of the DID workflow. This program and the many partnerships were far more than having good people and cool clothing working really hard. It became clear to me that the Downtown Improvement District was a researched, adaptive, responsive, and sophisticated set of programs and gathering of professionals meeting the rigors of downtown life with cutting edge engagement. Which led to a different set of questions entering my mind with the most central being, what is the full scope of the DID and who pays for this incredible work? Well, the first answer is kind of by the book. It's a, a business improvement district set up under Minnesota law, implemented by a city ordinance and commercial properties within a 120 block area of the core of downtown have agreed to a property assessment. There are districts like DID all across the nation, all across Minnesota, all across Minneapolis, but in the Minneapolis and Minnesota context, we're actually by far the largest. And even from a national standpoint, DID is on the larger side of these kinds of business improvement districts that exist and have for the last couple of decades. Putting money together that is, um, you know, to provide services that are not included in their standard uh, taxes that they would pay. So things like our greening program, our ambassador program, are all considered enhanced features. So it's really important for people to know that this is on top of the basic services or at a higher standard or at a higher frequency of the services that the city already does provide. I've got the operating plan for 2021. Mm -hmm. How do you build the budget every year? Well, we actually have a very large 15-person committee made up of property owners from downtown Minneapolis that all pay into the district. We go through four months of monthly meetings, sometimes twice a month. Start out the process with grabbing information to really understand what are the needs going to be of the following year, how we've we been doing so far, how have the programs we've been um, that we have been working and do we need to add other services. And then once we get the budget done, we go through all of our internal approval processes. 
then that does need to be sent to the city and at the same time we need to calculate and, and fine-tune all of that down to how much is it going to cost each individual property owner. What's the formula? And I guess it's probably different based on levels. The formula really is three components. The one is very simply where you are in the district. The objective of the district is to be able to provide different levels of services throughout the district but for the same outcome. So the idea is the areas of town that maybe don't have the density of pedestrians, the work there does not need to be at the same level to get the same sort of outcome. So we, we want consistency throughout the district, but we realize we don't have to perform the same service everywhere for that same consistency. That's the first component. You're either in the um, prime area or in the standard area. If you're in the standard area, once we get through all the calculations, we really just charge you 50% of what the charge would be. And the rest of the charge is really based upon the gross building area of a building in, in the district and the linear frontage. And how we do that is after we've done the budget, we take the components of the budget and really determine what components are more correct to be allocated based on gross building area and what is more related to a linear frontage. So for instance, the obvious one, ambassadors walking in front of your building, that seems to be something that makes most sense to be charged to a building by how much linear frontage they have. Other things like beautification and activation, that really benefits all of downtown. So that is kind of determined to be based on the gross building area, which is a measurement of the density of, pe of people that you bring to downtown. It's also important to note that these charges are only to commercial property owners. Um, nonprofits are exempt and residential buildings are exempt and government buildings are exempt other than the city of Minneapolis who has opted in to pay. That which was a mystery in the beginning is now more clear to me. These champions of goodness, these angels of hospitality, have a passion for helping others, are present to the needs of people, tend to be conversationalists, and they're unafraid to do the hard work of keeping downtown clean, safe, and most importantly, welcoming. They do this because they love the job. You can tell that people who have jobs because they have to. But every ambassador that I've encountered really enjoys what they're doing in terms of providing hospitality. In everything, they are leaders who embody the art, the science, and the practice of hospitality. Hospitality.